Hello and welcome to Still Behind the Bench. My name is Adam and on this channel I will attempt to describe the science behind distilling spirits in a more technical way. Hopefully it will whet your appetite to learn more and teach you enough so that you're more self-sufficient. So for this video I'm going to be talking about some of the sulfur-based flavors that can appear in your spirits. But first I'd like to thank my Patreons, especially Chris Turner and Linton. I can't thank you enough for help with this channel. So let's get started. In your time making spirits at home, you may or may not have ever detected meaty, vegetal, onion or garlic, rotten eggs or struck match, odors or tastes, flavors during your fermentation or in your spirits after distilling. These are all the result of sulfur-based compounds intentionally being created by the yeast or as a result of random encounters of compounds leading to certain chemical reactions. The first three sulfur-based compounds I'm going to talk about are hydrogen sulfide, methionol, and methane thiol, also known as methyl mercaptan. I believe I've spoken about the production of hydrogen sulfide in the past, but I'm going to do it again here. It has a rotten egg smell. It comes about as the result of a nitrogen deficiency when the yeast is trying to produce methionine or cysteine amino acids, and there isn't enough nitrogen to finish producing that amino acid. So the hydrogen sulfide is an intermediate compound in this metabolic pathway to produce these amino acids, and since there isn't any available nitrogen, the yeast will just dump this hydrogen sulfide out of the cell since holding it for too long is toxic to the cell. So now all of a sudden you start getting this rotten egg smell in your wash or mash. You can control the production of hydrogen sulfide by simply providing almost any amount of nitrogen, be it DAP or amino acids. I found that hydrogen sulfide only appears if you don't add any supplementary nitrogen and the feedstock you're using is already deficient in nitrogen. Like a straight sugar wash, it has no nitrogen at all. Grapes are pretty nitrogen deficient as well, so if you're going to be using grapes, like most winemakers do, they add a nitrogen supplement. The next compound is methionol, a sulfurous alcohol. It has a sweet onion vegetal flavor to it. It's produced in the same way as most fusel alcohols are from that uh, the previous video I did on fusel alcohols. The only difference is this methionol starts from methionine instead of any of those other amino acids that I talked about. It'll get transaminated into an alpha keto acid called alpha keto gamma methyl butyric acid. That's a mouthful. Then it gets decarboxylated into an aldehyde called methional, then reduced into the alcohol methionol. Controlling production of this will be similar to all the other fusel alcohols. You know, you want a wealthy, uh, sorry, a healthy, well-fed yeast with the right nutrients, but not too much so that they become overactive. And then you'll just be limiting the production of this compound. That said, not a lot of methionol will end up getting produced in the first place because of what happens with this next compound. Methane thiol, also known as methyl mercaptan, it has a cooked cabbage, garlic, savory, vegetal flavor. It sort of comes about because of the Ehrlich pathway. So again, we start with the amino acid methionine, and it gets broken down into an alpha keto acid like all the others. This one here, alpha keto gamma methyl butyric acid, except what happens after that is different. In comes this enzyme called demethylase. So it sort of slides in, and it'll grab on to this uh, alpha keto acid and it breaks it down into methane thiol and alpha keto butyric acid. So this amino acid will go off and become another amino acid while this methane thiol will just float around inside the cell waiting to be removed. Like with the fusel alcohols, the best you can do to get rid of this is to have healthy yeast, that have no need to break down amino acids, and you'll limit the amount of methane thiol. But as we will see with the next set of compounds, there's also something we can do to get rid of the flavors that come as a result of this compound. That said, before we get into the next set of compounds, if you have a mass die-off of yeast cells, a lot of methane thiol can be released into the wash, which can be, again, problematic based on what happens next. Okay, so the last three compounds I'm going to talk about are dimethyl sulfide, known as DMS, dimethyl disulfide, known as DMDS, and dimethyl trisulfide, known as DMTS. These are probably the most well-known sulfurous flavor compounds that can end up in your spirits, giving you strange off flavors again that are vegetal, garlicky, meaty, and in, case, in the case of DMTS, struck match. All three of these compounds are produced at the beginning of your fermentation. The latter two, dimethyl salt disulfide and dimethyl trisulfide, come about as a result of the oxidation of that previously produced methane thiol. So the methane thiol is oxidized into DMDS and then the DMDS is oxidized into DMTS. 
Obviously, this can only happen when there's oxygen present. So it happens at the beginning of your of your fermentation. They're produced and then they're just expelled or excreted out of the cell. But as these two are being oxidized and helping use up the present oxygen, along with the cells, the yeast cells growing and using up oxygen, that dropping oxygen rate is going to do is it's going to protect the enzyme demethiolate that I talked about in the previous sulfur compound. Demethiolase is inactivated or limited by the presence of oxygen. As the oxygen levels drop, this enzyme will become more active. And what it does is when it encounters a methionine amino acid, it will convert it directly into dimethyl sulfide. So methionol, like the rest of the fusels, the best you can do to limit its production so that these don't get produced is to, again, have a healthy yeast that don't want to break down methionine in the first place. They will not produce very much demethiolase as well. And then you will lower the amount that you're producing in the first place. That said, you can get rid of these specific sulfur compounds, DMS, DMDS, and DMTS, during distillation by having copper present in your still. I did a whole video on why you should have copper in your still, so I'm not going to rehash the entire thing, but it is very beneficial to have copper to get rid of these compounds. I'll link to the study I used in that video and I'll link to the video itself in the description of the video. Another thing of note is that these three compounds are going to be the highest concentration of sulfur compounds that you will typically find. Another thing is the two sulfur-based amino acids, methionine and cysteine, are required in essentially every single protein that the yeast is going to make. So you can't just withhold sulfur as a nutrient and hope to not make very many of them. It's just not going to happen. The yeast will probably stall out and stop fermenting. So as you can see, and as you may have already gathered from watching my other videos, everything is interconnected during fermentation. And it's just as easy to produce off flavors as it is good flavors. Luckily for a lot of the off flavors, we can produce, we can limit their production just by keeping our fermentation healthy. And we can get rid of some of them during distillation, either by chemical reactions or by making proper cuts. That's it for this video on sulfur flavors. Make sure to check out the Patreon or PayPal donation link if you want to help out the channel. No pressure though. I hope you learned something. Please click like and subscribe if you want to learn more and have a great week.